Good evening, everybody, and welcome along to the very first 100 racing stream of 2022. Can you believe it? It's almost been two months since our last race, but we are ready to get going. And what a way to open it with eight cracking races on ACC. The drivers will be racing around seven different countries and eight different circuits, all in a bid to become ACC champion for their specific class. There's been quite a few changes this season, but we'll go through all of them in just a moment. We're going to try and get all, for all of them in five minutes, which is going to be quite tricky, but I'm sure we'll get through it. One of the major changes, John is not going to be here tonight. He's at work. He will be back next week. For this week and for certain rounds this season, you've got myself in the commentary box once again. My name is Jess Ball, for those of you that don't know me. But joining me and John's side once again is someone we loved so much last season. We invited him to commentate with us once again. It is someone who also raced a lot on ACC and knows a lot of what the drivers are going through. It is my favourite Italian. It's Christian. How are you doing tonight, Christian? <laughs> Hi, Jess. Uh, all good, actually. Uh, it's great to be back here in a... Uh, to commentate on those beautiful races that we'll, we will see in, uh, in OHR. Uh, I think it will be a magnificent season, mostly because of uh, a lot of drivers have, have been back from season one, some are from season two, and some are new. So it's going to be a bit of, a, of an exciting season. I am very excited already. I've been excited about this all day, all evening, ready to get this moment out of the way. So, major change this season compared to last season is the cars that some of our drivers will be racing this season. We've still got the GT3s. The GT3s will be coming back, but also racing alongside the GT3s will be the GT4. So, there will be a multi-class race involved for all eight rounds of the championship and only 10 drivers will be racing GT3s, and 10 drivers will be racing GT4s, and it makes it all even more exciting. All 20 drivers will still be in the same race, but whoever comes out on top of the GT3s will win a trophy and a £25 Amazon or PSN gift voucher. The same prize gets given out to the winner of the GT4 category as well. Plenty of incentives for the drivers to do well, isn't it, Christian? Uh, yeah. Uh, I think the major thing to look at uh, is the fact that GT3s need to get over the GT4s as quickly as possible, but also as safe as, as safely as possible. Uh, and it probably will be the key factor in, in these races. Uh, uh, how fast uh, will the G GT3 drivers be able to lap the GT4 drivers more than the GT3 fight in, in itself? Because if you have a gap and uh, you encounter someone else slower than you, which is a GT4 is pretty much... Uh, 20 second lap slower, uh, 15 or 20. Uh, you need to be very careful to the places where to overtake, where to wait, where to put the overtake, uh, trying to maybe uh, put the, the slower cars as an obstacle for your, uh, for your rivals. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see also the tactic into the, the race, apart from the, the, the pit stops and etc. Uh, yes, that is going to be even more of a factor with, obviously, the GT4s having to be lapped by the GT3s as well. And yes, the pit windows as well. Each driver can't pit until the allocated pit window, which is usually halfway through the race. And not in the sprint races, though, because obviously they don't have to pit during the sprint races. So... We're going to talk about the rules um, as the drivers get into qualifying, but because we only have one minute left of free practice, let's go through the teams and drivers that are going to be racing. Each team has a GT3 driver and a GT4 driver. So we're going to do it in alphabetical order because I thought it's the most easiest. So Belgium waffle team, we've got ERT Samba and we have got um, ERT Arnaud. So ERT Samba... Um, they've got on, both of them got on very well as well. And it's uh, both of them, I believe, is their first season in the, in, at uh, One Hub Racing ACC. Another AR, ERT team, we've got Milden and Eddie, loving the blue looking theme deliveries for ERT there, for BMW. Of course, they'll be driving in the BMWs for their respective classes. Greentown Motorsport, we've got Corrado998. And NRLR Bowers Corrado making another appearance because he because he was racing last season. NRLR Bowers is its first season at One Hub Racing with us, 
And uh, you may know him from Never Laugh Racing, so uh, nice to see some fans from him in the chat. Capati boys, we've got Mikel Gallo and Thomas Caesar. Apologies if I said those names wrong. Those are both um, their first seasons with us in ACC. Um, in the Martini Racing Car, both in the Porsches, actually, we've got Essa Picul, a driver that me and Christian know very well. And we are very excited to see how these two race. And we've got Flip Bordeaux as well, having his first season with us. In our CG racing team, we've got uh, Jason um, who is and Rageman, both of them with their second season with us on ACC side. Obviously, they're well known for the Formula 1 side too, so great to see them here. And those are their cards as well. Rageman, I love him because he's in the Audi. Floppy Fox is in a Ferrari along with a team with Corey. Corey is an ERT driver. And it's his first season with us on ATC. He's very excited to get going and get racing at One Hub again. And they're called Scramble Legs. I love that name. Um, the leftovers. We've got Fly Sky. I'm not gonna. I, I can't. I'm not gonna attempt to say the last baby's name because I might pronounce it wrong. Fly Sky is in the GT3, and his teammate um, is a, a well-known content creator and streamer on Twitch, and also an ERT person it is badger man so good to have him on board because he's also he's all he was also a commentator back in the day at one hub and now he's turned the commentator role to racing so great to see him here volkswagen racing we have got um the aldi and the porsche together we've got apex rogue in the gt3 and of course we've got split um x champion from last season carmentalist and finally, just in time, how cool is that? We've got uh, the final team, both ERT drivers, ERT Camo Babo and ERT Khalifa. So those are the 10 teams and 20 drivers I will be racing this season. What do you think about this lineup, Christian? Uh, there are some favourites and there are some surprises, as always. Uh, I think the, the favourite one... Uh, for me, in my, in my opinion, for the GT4 is Carmentalist. Uh, I've always been pretty honest about him, and uh, he has an extraordinary pace, especially in race, uh, more than qualifying. Uh, he's able to to put uh, uh, great laps in qualifying, and uh, to put even a, a better race pace, uh, pretty consistent uh, with very little mistakes in the race. And considering it's a 60 minutes race, you can you can do mistakes, but if you don't, it's it's a bit better. And in an hour, there are more chances to do one. And he's one of of the drivers that is it's very rare you can find him on the grass. Uh, <laughs> for GT3, I think it's uh, if it's probably one of the mm, uh, most promising drivers I've I've encountered so far. Uh, which is Floppy Fox. Uh, in some months, uh, in the span of four or five months, he, he managed to find an extraordinary pace. Uh, he has completely flipped himself. Uh, five months ago, he, he was, I'll be honest, one second slower than his, himself now. And, and he's doing a stellar job to improving himself. And I've, I've rested with him, and I'm, I'm quite, uh, quite surprised by uh, the incredible pace he, he's starting to have and he's becoming very very fast and he's probably he's probably going to be one of the uh top level drivers in, in his class um the surprise could be rogue rogue last season did a a pretty good uh middle season there, there were some top some some down and it was a bit of a roller coaster for him like uh he he it was clear that he had the pace it just that he couldn't really manage to finish the job, and I think he, with, uh, with some with some more preparation, he may be able to to get himself in the first rows. Um, also, some surprises I can't be uh, are, are surprises, so I can't just say a name and hopefully be right. Uh, but there are a lot of names, and we could see also some some clear. Uh, uh, out of the water uh, drivers uh, and I saw in practice uh, in the practice session that Michael Gallo was, was the first in his class uh, 
and I'm not sure if it was uh, if he was trying to a quali a quali pace or a race run. In either case, uh, he was the first in his, in, uh, in the leaderboard, so he may be one of the surprises. Yes, so we are in qualifying, as you can see, and slightly changed the qualifying format for this season. It is split into two 10-minute sessions um, in the full 20-minute qualifying. So the GT4s are up first. They'll be doing their qualifying, so the GT3s will be taking a nice rest for 10 minutes whilst the GT4s are setting their lap times. And then straight after that, with 10 minutes to go, then the GT3s will take centre stage and do their qualifying session. And what a great track to start this season with Snetterton. And it is 2.969 kilometres long. It's Snetterton's longest layout and second longest racing track in the country. One of the post-war generation of ex-airfield circuits. Plenty of overtaking opportunities. We, of course, got... Um, turn two heading into Montreal. We also got turn four, seven, eight, and ten as well. And most of the corners are actually named after Formula One references. We've got the Senna Straight um, heading towards turn one. We've got the Hamilton as well. We've got Murray named after Murray Walker, of course. Brundle, and and it's just it's just such a nice circuit. It's great to see. So we've got a few drivers about to cross the line to finish their laps. So Flip sets the first time on the board in a number 888 car with a 159.034. And then we've got a few more cars coming across the line um, to finish their laps as well. I'm, ju I'm just trying to keep an eye on who's on track at the moment. It's quite difficult. We've got Thomas across the line now. I believe he might be starting his lap, actually. No, he goes fastest by attempt. The times are getting very close already so we've had three people set time to, don't forget since they only have 10 minutes the drivers don't have very long at all we got Khalifa slots his time slot into P3 so looking good so he'll be going in to the pits we'll go through uh, someone's lap in a second actually but good to see Thomas up there now, at the moment as we see Rage Man going on a trip to the grass thing about tree uh, Bottas there right now as well and uh I think we're seeing a few people having a bit of offers as well. That's probably why a few people are struggling there as well. What is different between the GT4s and the GT3s, do you think? Because there's some people that have come from Formula 1 and don't know the differences between the two classes. Well, uh, the major difference is uh, the, the air package. In GT4, it's pretty much stock. Uh, the car has very little uh, aero edits. Uh, it has a, a wing, obviously. Uh, a bit of a sort of diffuser, but nothing too extreme. Uh, that's it. Basically, it has the, the whole car. It's nothing to add up. Uh, in terms of aero, the really, really the major thing is just the, the wing and the rear diffuser in some, some sort of diffuser. But other than that, it's basically the stock car completely taken out of everything that uh, is useless, like uh, uh, rear seats, passenger seat. Uh, wall car is... Uh, oh well, also there are some uh, some little wings uh, on, on the front, but... Uh, the major thing is the fact that in terms of aero, it's, uh, it's a lot less uh, aerodynamic package, so... The advantage in it is, is the fact that GT4s are able to uh, are some sort of touring cars, uh, late 90s, uh, 2000 uh, touring cars. So they are great for battling. Uh, you can carry on uh, even with damages without any problem. I I remember uh, in, a, in a race where uh, my teammate had like 14 seconds of damage and he, he literally lose 0, 0.0 seconds in his pace. So they are actually very good for fighting and uh, some great side by side, uh, head to head uh, battles could be could be done very easily. Uh, you don't need some extreme uh, uh, setup changes. Uh, uh, you do, you don't need to to study the car uh, in every single factor of its own because uh, the thing is the fact that uh, in in terms of setup uh, they are very simple. Uh, it's the real key. In these cars, uh, uh, is the driver is the way that he runs, uh, and the way that his effective skills are what changes in the 
in the scoreboard in GT Force. Mm. The, the final thing is the fact that you can really push these cars. Uh, these cars are really, uh, really good on on their limit. Like GT3, uh, uh, like you you have to to go on 90, 95% on a GT3. Uh, because if you slightly go over the limit, uh, you can spin or uh, go complete understeer and go out. Uh, or getting a sort of boat effect where uh, the uh, like you are turning right and the left side goes too much down and you get the other side around because it's like a boat. In GT4 you can just throw the car and off for the best. <laughs> that's that's the, the thing that likes the, the the I appreciate the most about these cars because I I really love them. But there are there aren't a lot of leaks that are running them. And uh, Luckily, here in OHR, uh, we have uh, both GT3 and GT4 to get a very good battle uh, between them. And uh, you can really push them hard, as hard as you want, uh, and uh, you don't get me any particular difficulty in that. Even the fact is also important for uh, new drivers. In fact, for new drivers, uh, I think the, the best advice I can give uh, is do, we, do races with GT4. Uh, I see a lot of people trying to get as fast as possible with the car, with the fastest setup possible, while you just need to understand the car, the track, the physics, and etc. So starting with GT4 is extremely, is extremely good, but it's also extremely fun because these cars are just another type of driving, and they are so lovely to to watch, but also to drive. While GT3 really needs some. Uh, set up tricks, uh, you need to study the car, you need to study the different effects uh, the setup gives you. Uh, the cars have uh, a bop on its own uh, for every single track also. Uh, also, obviously, there is uh, the the power difference. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's about 100 or so horsepower of difference. If I remember mm. correctly. Mm. So... All together, you get a slower car, obviously, but uh, it's, it's so fun, and it's unfortunate that it's a DLC in the game. I would have yeah. put it free because they are so fun to drive. I, I, to be fair, I, I enjoy racing the GT Wars around ACC. It's a lot of fun, but we will have to cut our conversation short because the GT4 qualification is over. We did actually get a chance to go for a lap around Snedderton. But it is Car Mentalist that takes pole position in GT4. The man that has been really, really powerful in the ATC leagues that we do at One Half Racing has been top in every single season he does. First in our inaugural season where there was no splits. And in the top split, he was top. So he is going to show that why he's top of everything. So your order for GT4 then before the GT3s do their laps. It's Carmentalist on pole, Flip will be second, Thomas will be third, Khalifa will be fourth, the top four separated by seven tenths per second, Corey in fifth, Arnaud will be sixth, and actually Arnaud set the same time as Bowers there, so I have to say, um, fair play to both of them. Um, we've got uh, Badgerman in eighth position, he was aiming not to be last place, and guess what, he's not last. And uh, we've got Eddie um, in ninth position and i think uh, i need to actually check uh no jason in the gt3 okay and i believe that's uh every single gt4 available and we'll move on to the gt3s now the big guns that we've came to love and know since the very beginning so there are car variations between the gt3 class the engine placement is quite different as well and the difference to formula one for those of you that are new the TC and ABS is on, it's used in real life and in the game. And the engine side is can vary from 3.5 litres to 6.2 litres um, on V8 and 2 for V10s as well. And the rear engine cars can have their aero at the front, whereas their front engine cars have balanced aero as well. So, we'll keep an eye on our first drivers to set the time in sports. I will keep an eye on Mikel Gallo as well who was a driver who was on top in practice, but I wonder if a few people were sandbagging practice a little bit and just was focusing on getting their eye on the track a bit more as well. 
So a few drivers were asked in at the pre-race interviews on why they chose the car of choice. And uh, Mikel Gallo said, very easy choice because I did not drive a car other than the Bentley. So he has chose, gone for the Bentley this time. Camo Babo chosen um, the Bentley in season one. And before his hiatus in, in Wamaha Racing ATC, he was using that. So the obvious choice was for going back into that as well. And uh, who is the other GT3? It's got Floppy Fox. He was happy with the Ferrari. He might change for next season, but he's happy with the Ferrari at the moment. And uh, I'm just trying to see M. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And Milden was thinking Bentley until days ago in a late switch to the M6, which he's making good progress with. So there we go. Those are a few thoughts. We'll go through a few questions as they go and go through a few rules as they go as uh, well. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is going. There's a, a few cars almost coming together there as Floppy Fox comes across the line. We've got two cars actually coming across the line to finish their lap. 148-1 um, goes Floppy Fox. So we've got Sam, but not that far behind. And we get Apex Road, Camo Babo. The times are coming in right now. And Rage Man's in the pits actually. So I don't know. Oh, I know he's in the GT4. So Rage Man did not set time, I don't think. I mean, that's probably why. He probably wants to opt for the back of the grid. Corrado comes across the line in fifth and that will leave Milden the last of our GT3 drivers to set a representative lap time so here he comes to the line so let's see what he could do the wind speed is about two kilometers an hour at the moment and it's a 147.9 just like last season pretty much all the races the weather is random so we don't know what the weather's going to be like until the drivers get into the session but it looks like it's completely clear but so far Milden is up top in the GT3s, but we do expect it because he did well last season and he did well in season one, just missing out on the season one, one title to come into this, Christian. Uh, yeah, I'm quite surprised by Milden actually. Uh, it's pretty famous in the Assetto Corsa community that the BW is uh, basically the slowest car ever made uh, in a game. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually surprised that he got Paul uh, for now. I don't want to jinx him. Sorry if I do. Uh, but I'm quite surprised by the, the by the Beamer. I'm I just pictured because honestly, I, it's one of the worst car series. It's if not the worst car on the grid, and he still managed to nearly put it on Paul. Sorry, and oh, there no, we took go. The, Apex took the Rogue. Pole. 147.3, four temps quicker than Floppy Fox. Floppy Fox crossed the line in a P2. So Milden was misplaced there by Apex Rogue, another driver to keep an eye on. Apex Rogue, I have to say, was a dark horse. He came from F1, but did a lot of ATC in the past as well, not as much as the other guys. And he got his first podium in the first race of the season last season. In um, I think it was in a pre-season race as well, where he did well at Donington Park. And... He, he, he's shown that he's a man who's not to be underestimated. So great to see him up there as well. The GT3 drivers are quite close. Jason, the driver who admits on his day would be near the back of the GT3 um, class. Uh, but he wants to fight a few duels on track and just set a good pace in these conditions. Eddie, the most important goal in get racing for him is to improve on your own laps and consistency the results are consequent. So, to be honest, Eddie is hoping that consistency is key. Eddie um, has got, obviously, a lot of work to do, but he is doing quite well at the moment. So, uh, I was saying, Corral just wants to have good race. Apex Row wants to try and aim for top three because he was so close last season. And uh, Rage Man is over for P5 in class. And Corey just said he, wa he wants to have fun at the moment. I'll just pick in a few drivers at random as well. We will go through obviously all of them very, very soon. Uh, we'll go through a few rule changes compared to last season as we didn't have time to go through it um, during the time because we had to sort a few technical hitches which, believe it or not, it was fixed luckily, so thank goodness. So, all drivers must complete a pit stop within the pit window for both tyres and fuel this season and Obviously, the qualifying sessions are different for GT3, GT4, GT4 first, GT3 last. 
If they don't come into the pits during that pit window, which is 30 minutes into the race, they will be referred to the stewards and they could get a penalty, disqualified, whatever. And drivers will need to pick one car in the whole event. So all the cars we're seeing at the moment will be the cars that will be in the race. The Apex Rose in the Audi. John will like this, Christian. He's a uh, floppy fox in the Ferrari. So, John, if you're watching this back, you're probably going to be rooting for this man because he's in your beloved Ferrari. Uh, um, shame you're missing this, my friend, due to work. But uh, good to see you in spirit. He's only two one numbers quick, slower than Apex Rose. So he's very quick right now at the moment. As this track is very technical to get right as well. A few people are on there in laps at the moment before they start their one final lap at the moment as well. And there's going to be two sprint races. Well, two rounds where there's going to be sprint races, which will be Zandvoort and Barcelona, round three and round six. And for the final round this season, we will be at Paul Ricard and it will be the 19 minute the one that we all go to grow and love. But every other race this season, rounds one, two, four, five, and seven, there'll be 60 minutes. So tonight will be 60 minute race. And we'll see if anyone is about to cross the line or set their final lap as Apex Rogue. I think he's about to start his final lap. He backed off a little bit. We've got the number eight of Floppy Fox. I have to say Apex Rogue and Floppy Fox are going to be contenders with Milden as well. Because the Audi and the Ferrari are quite fast around here. So we'll see what the, the, both of them can do as they cross the line for one final time to set their final lap. And we've got the 209 car of Miguel Gallo. A second down on his previous best. He's about to start. Everyone's about to start their final lap. It is crunch time from these guys. Samba won't be going again. He just set a, another lap time. Four attempts slower than P1. But he slots himself into fourth place. Corrado in P5. So qualifying is about to end. And the times are coming in thick and fast. We'll see who is Ooh, about closer. to get pole position. It is, it is getting close, Christian, isn't it? Uh, 0 0.066 between three drivers and the only one that, that can effectively put another time is Floppy Fox because Rogue drifted through a turn. Yeah, he did. So, that was uh, a bit interesting. I, <laughs> yeah, I think it was like, uh, it was turn four if I'm correct. And I, just, I noticed he, he was sliding around the, the turn, so I don't think he's going to improve its time, but Floppy Fox is still on his own in a, in a effective valid lap. And between among the three, there are less, there is less than a fifth. And uh, the BMW is in pole. So it's going to be, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Milton's on pole at the moment. Milton's on pole at the moment. The only person that could place him is Floppy Fox, maybe Corrado as well. But we're going to be watching Floppy Fox finish his lap as he comes yeah, towards the, the final corner. Can he improve on his time and get pole position? No. Nope. So he only manages P3. And that will mean, unless Corrado could do anything about it, Milden is on pole position by three one hummers of a second. So Milden is on pole for the GT3 class. Car Mentalist will be on pole for the GT4 class. We run for your uh, GT4. Let's run for your GT3 grade. We've got ERT Milden on pole. Apex Rogue in second. Floppy Fox third. Samba fourth. Corrado fifth. Mikael Gala Gallo in sixth. Camo Baba in seventh. Jason in eighth position. And I think that's all the GT3s today because we've got Fly who's not here. And quite a few drivers that are missing. So let's have a quick look at the calendar whilst the drivers get their setups ready for the race. So the calendar that we have got. So we at Senaton here today. We head to Laguna Seca for round two of the season. Then we head to Zamvort. Then for the sprint race. Then we got Mount Panorama, the dreaded Bathurst, where actually the World Cup, the Esports World Cup, visited on. Uh, the weekend. I really enjoyed watching that actually. So that's going to be a huge spectacle. I actually get to commentate Bathurst because John won't be here that week. So very excited for that one. And we got Mazzano round number five. I remember when I first got ACC, Mazzano used to be a bit of a meme in one of the communities I'm in. So don't know why, but there we go. Barcelona is round six. 
uh, which is another sprint race. Alton Park, round seven. And the final round at the end of March will be Paul Ricard, and that will be an endurance race. Quick mention of our sponsors. We've got quite a lot this season. One of our newest sponsors to the league is the, is the company that has been powering the league this season, been controlling all the standings, helped us with sign-ups and all that jazz, and has been supporting us in many ways. It is SimGrid. They'll also be partnering us with on the F1 side as well. So thank you to Singrid for all your help and support so far in getting this sign-up sorted and getting all the stuff on the website and stuff like that. And when, when you see the standings on the website, it's going to be cool. Make sure you follow us on uh, um, Singrid as well. Appreciated to get the followers. Um, our next main sponsor, Next Level Racing, they've been partnering us since, pretty much since the early days on F1. And uh, they sponsor the league by providing our direct drive stand to the driver who gets the most drivers of days in F1. That's last season. 3M Sim Racing sponsors the league as well. They provide a pair of sim racing gloves to a few of the F1 guys as well. Who knows? It could come to ACC. Hopefully. And we also got our partners, Vespertine, that provide our merch for us. You can go on to their website, search for One Hub Racing and get our merch and also support our championship prizes. And our final sponsor and partner is ERT Elite Racing Team, who have a few drivers racing in tonight, and they're going to be partnering the ERT Going Gets Tough Award, which every driver can um, participate in. All they need to do is complete all their media day stuff, which is pre- and post-race interviews, and finish outside the top three in their split. And also, our final partner is very, very important. It's good to talk if you're feeling down, um, we also have the Mental Health Foundation partnering us as well. So if you're feeling down at one point, make sure you get help because you do not, definitely do not want to suffer in silence as well. So we are about to get underway for the formation lap then. Very, very exciting. It's a nice sunset evening here in Snedderton right now. So we'll be doing a rolling start. Obviously, the GT3s will be first. And then, of course, will be the GT4s. So there will be a bit of a gap as well. So obviously, the Ooh, GT... there is already a surprise. What? Corsa didn't put the car on the grid in time. Oh, he will start no! from the pit lane. That is one thing the drivers have got to remember. They've got a set time limit to get onto the grid. They've got two minutes. It's not like Formula 1, where if you do not ready up, you you could just you could just the car the AI will just let you go for you. In ACC, it's a lot different. If you don't ready up within the two minutes, you will be starting at the back, and you have to wait until all the GT3s get past and all the GT4s get past, which is absolutely nightmare. So Corey has already done a bottle already in ACC, and the, the worst thing about it is he's in ERT. So Dexter is probably. Um, being in very cross with Corey at the moment, saying, Corey, what have you done? So, uh, massive shout outs basically to all of our ERT drivers, actually, seven of them in total. We've got Milden, we have got Eddie, we've got Khalifa, we've got Camo Babo, we've got Arnold, we've got Samba, we've got Corey, and we've got Badgeman. No, there's eight, there's eight. Okay, there's eight, not seven. There we go. Thank you to all um, our. Um, ERT drivers, obviously, because ERT provide a lot of help and support for this league. All of our ERT drivers have got free entry into this league. Oh, this is very, very exciting. I hope you guys are excited. Get your hype stuff in the chat. Let us know in the chat who you think is going to win each split. Are you excited for the one hub ACC season to begin? Miltos, I uh, believe, who was from. ER team, well, big welcome to you, Tom. We welcome to you as well. We got Dexter as well. Collins in the chat as well. Evil Dragon, we got Johannes as well. And Fly, massive shout out to you as well. Hopefully, you enjoyed the racing wherever you are on holiday. And best of luck when you join us next week. I'm gonna put you on the spot here before we start. Very, very quickly, though, because we're about to start. Who's gonna win GT3 and who's gonna win GT4 for this race? Uh, the three in front are literally separated by me blinking my eye. 
So I, uh, I can throw a dice and, and say that the result is that one. <laughs> Obviously, so, I don't, I don't know. So you don't know. In GT3, no. In GT4, probably car mentalist. He made alpha second in qualifying. As I said, his race pace is even better than his quality pace. So if the if the qualifying went went good, the race will be even better. But the main thing is the fact that probably it will be night before the the race ends. So it will be a bit of a spicing in the race because some drivers are better in the day and some drivers are better in the night. Well, yes, yeah, so we're about to get started as they all head towards the center straight. The sun is beaming down and all Milder's got to do is have the best start as he possibly can. The start of one hub racing. ACC season three is about to get underway. And we are go, go, go. Let's see who has the better run here towards turn one. We're looking at Apex Rogue on the right hand side. He's had a good start as well. As they head towards turn number one, Milder not quite the best of starts, but you probably would expect it in the BMWs as they head towards Riches and uh, Montreal as well. And there's a tight bend as they head towards Oggies as well. We'll keep on the night on the GT4s in just a moment there's quite a bit of a gap there between those as well because obviously they're 10 seconds slower but it is um apex road that leaves the gt freeze milden in second samba in third place but now let's see how our gt4s are doing on the grid right now as uh, they're doing the one hop, the f1 thing where the timings are going absolutely crazy <laughs> there we go so it's carmentalist that leads uh the uh the uh, is it? I, I'm not entirely sure. Or is it the back? Did he spin? I, I don't know. It's hard to tell because the timings have not updated. But it is Apex Row that is leading the field away as we're seeing quite a few battles in the GT4s as well. We got Arnold having a tense battle with Thomas as well as they make their way. I'm trying to remember what this, this next section is. I believe. Uh, I'm trying to see. I think it's near... Um, I think it's towards near Nelson and Bombhole coming up at the moment. So we're seeing Arnold almost trying to get a move there as well. We've got Eddie trying to make moves too. There's lots of moves being made as well as someone's almost gone off. That's Bowers. That almost that almost got the move done at Eddie, but he didn't. Obviously, call the temperatures here in Sledson because it is at night. It is 8 p.m. right on the gearbox at the moment in the GT4. And this is incredible stuff from these drivers. So the pit lane is open, but the pit lane window Ooh, is so not open the pizza. Kamababa's in the pit, so he must have got damaged then. He must have got damaged. No, no. I think he's gonna try to, to get on, a, on another tactic because I saw him battling so hard in the first lap, but uh, trying to, he didn't touch any other cars. I think he, he just want to get on the pits, change, change tires, Put one liter of fuel and get back on track and do one hour of race uh, with the same set of tire, which is a bit of a suicidal tactic. But uh, maybe it works in terms of position because Astros Deteron is a very difficult track to overtake on. So maybe he wants to get some very clean air and put the hot lap laps into the race as soon as possible. And towards the 40 minutes mark, he will be in front of some other drivers. If it works, kudos to him. Yeah, well, well, to, you can see the number one next to their name, which means when the pit lane window opens, once they pit, it will show green with no number. Camo Babo pitted, okay, no, pit, Camo Babo pitted outside that pit window, which means he will need to pit one more time in order for the mandatory pit stop to count as we're seeing floppy fox getting very tasty there going side by side almost there as well that's a common place to overtake there as they head towards the next bend around here this is a track where my mom and dad used to uh watch i think this is with it this is the corner where my mom and dad watched in the btcc back in 2019 and they very much enjoyed that as well we got some movement in the gt4s as well bowers uh, as b is trying to pressurize Badgerman for a move as well to see if he can try and go but someone's gone off actually um in the background that is rage man that is rage man that's gone off he's in the gravel and i don't think he i'm trying to see if he's got damage i don't think so Ooh. he was very uh, lucky a gt3 is off a gt3 is off we need to find out which gt3 it uh, the 97 is. the 97 uh, that's samba. samba he was that's in third samba. position in third position 
and he's had a bit of an off and that is the life of floppy fox and corrado that could get past him what a shame for the number 97 there who had a brilliant qualifying session and i have to say a bit of a shame but he only he only lost i think oh he's dropped down to sixth now what a shame which will allow the likes of jason to catch up to him as well but it could have been worse for samba at this moment in time but luckily it was not so um that is great to see what about the battle for the lead then let's go on the cheeky on board view then between these guys milden versus apex rogue for the lead apex rogue i'm not used to seeing him at the front on the gt3 side but i have to say fair play to him he's had one of the best starts i've ever seen in snedderton and i forgot to turn the racing line off on acc so when when i when you go on board you sh you probably still be able to see it i'll need to turn it off next week well in three races time when i when we go uh um, racing again but I'll, at least you can't see it when we're in this shot as well and look at this floppy fox is also in this fight as well a three-way fight for the lead it's getting intense as well and corrado could catch up as well as they head to pass the center straight heading towards turn one so very very tight heading towards this bend into turn two as well again not being able to make the move i have to say milden doing a brilliant job in the bmw not many people went for the bmws apart from one team very very brave as well and milden's last lap time actually was a 1485 i'll keep an eye on apex rose time in just a moment as well because they've already done a few laps but it's good to see that battle as well and i think you can also see if i get the right camera um you can see floppy fox on the back but i think he's a second behind i don't think he's going to catch up anytime soon unfortunately so uh, he's got a lot of work to do but anything can happen in one hub racing acc and evil dragon saying in the chat bnw is a big boy yes it is a big boy <laughs> it really is but we could see milden try and go for a move here he's not going to go for the move he, he's going to wait ever so patiently at this moment in time so we're going to go back to the gt4 action and it is not as close battle for the lead as we would have hoped carmentalist leads flip by 2.7 seconds and then we got khalifa in third in the gt4 class 1.8 seconds back to khalifa is arnold his ert compatriot and the closest battle in the GT4 class is Thomas Sizer and Arnold as well. So good to see that. And we've got Mikel, Garlo and Corrado. Actually, this is the closest battle on track. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Here we go. This is the first side-by-side -side action we're seeing all race. As they head towards turn one, is he going to go around the long way around? He does not. As I will see Corrado trying to cover off Gallo. Now heading towards turn two, we've got Gallo trying to go for another lunch there as well. But again, being very, very patient. He's just around about six tenths off of Corrado. But I have to say, some good racing, but he was not able to pull it off. Well, Gallo is in the Bentley and the C McLarens are a lot easier to handle than the Bentleys. But I have to say, fair play if you're running the Bentleys or the BMWs. Um, around Sedgerton, I have to say, as they clip the curb there, a bit of gravel as well, but no harm done. Oh, battle for, for a position GT4 between the 92, the 92 and 27, because Ed is in the inside in turn one, uh, into trying to uh, overtake the Aston of, of Badgerman. Ed is still on the inside on turn Ooh. two, probably trying the late braking on the airplane, but he's not close enough. He still is, uh, and he's sticking to the inside, but he's gonna be the outside in the next turn, in turn three, while the Bentley of uh, of uh, Kamababu is trying to get to uh, uh, over them, but he, I think he's gonna. He needs to wait them uh, because they are still battling in, in their class, uh, and they are still side by side, uh, even in turn four. Now the BMW oh, oh, is maybe three wide. Th this is amazing stuff as well. The number twenty just about holding on to Eddie there, and they've got the problem now of 
cars which are even faster trying to get past as well and we got Camo Baba in this fight as well freeway fight oh no somebody's uh, going off the track someone's gone off the track i will keep somebody's them off. Uh, that is track again. A number 20 something um uh, uh i don't know what car it is but it's a, it's a number 20 something i have to say so no it's uh, 97 it it's is the no, it's samba. samba again mm -hmm. he is not having a good race but we're gonna still see uh, oh my god, it's now coming. It's going to be free abreast into this next corner. Can they keep it clean? They're trying to as well as Camo Babo. What a brilliant move to get past Badgerman. His ELT compatriot up into sixth place in class. And fair play to all three of these drivers. And Camo Babo is now going to go for a move on Thomas. Oh my word, they're just battling, going everywhere right now and i can't remember what turn it is as they head towards the final corners of the center straight then camo baba doing all he needs to do as well here comes i think eddie is not quite close enough as well to the likes of badger remember can he go for a lunge to turn one not as close as the last lap but i have to say that was absolutely incredible and if you're a fan of any of those three drivers, Badger Man, Eddie or Camo Babo, you'll be absolutely loving this right now. But I think the star there had to be Camo Babo with his impressive performance and he capitalised on those two battling. And he's like, you know what, I'll go for the move. So fair play, that, that was incredible with the GT4s. Hopefully we can see the same for the GT3s, maybe with Gallo and Corrado. I... Still don't understand effectively the tactic of Kamo Babo talking about him because effectively uh, oh, before Kamo's I... Oh, Kamo's GT3! I just realised that. Yes. Oh. He has an event lead. Oh yeah, it, 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 we will get used to it. We will get used to it. It, it is hard. Obviously he is a, 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 a faster class as well. So he's trying to make his way through other classes. Do apologise. Do apologise. Sorry Dexter. Uh, we will get used to it as the season goes on. Here comes Kamo Babo past. I believe Khalifa, which is his teammate. So the fact is that Bentley is uh, effectively battling for position because uh, he beat. Oh, oh no, the Porsche no! of Khalifa is off track. He's off track. That's Khalifa. That's oh, the Bentley nearly touched him. I think he's just in the middle of the line. That's Khalifa. He's he needs to move wait out the way. He's got to move out the way. Everyone. And oh my goodness, that car! I don't know which car it was. It was the AMG car that was riding the curves nicely there. If it was an F1 car, it would uh, it would have a bit of damage there. And uh, we've got royalty in the chat who is uh, watching the stream whilst he's working or just come back from work. I don't know. Hello, John. How are you doing, my friend? Hope to see you next week, my friend. But. We miss you in the commentary, but it's weird, isn't it? Not having John commentate on the action. He's, he hasn't missed a single race in ACC covering the oh, action. Oh, no, Thomas Cesar is off track. Uh, yeah, I did see damage, him Gallo off track. Yeah, this corner no, Thomas could be Cesar. a tank zapper. That corner could be a tank zapper for all involved. We see not one, not two, but uh, three cars as well. Just, just, just try and... Uh, Get some bowels in as well. That's just absolutely intense to tell you the truth as well. And we've got 47 minutes on the clock. Not quite where the pit window as well. We've got Floppy Fox. He is chasing, chasing, chasing in that Ferrari. Oh, and there's a big crash for him. Eddie's off track. Huh? And does oh, no, several position track. and also damages. Eddie's off track. That is a huge mm -hmm. crash on the bend as well. Thomas has got to try and get past in the BMW. What a shame there. So, Eddie, unfortunately, has had a bit of an off, but Floppy Fox has found an extra two terms on Milden this lap as well, which is allowing Apex Road Rogue to close in as well. Well, to increase the gap as well on these drivers. So 45 minutes to go, of course, this is the first race of the ACC League for Season 3. The first time ever we've got GT3s and GT4s. And we're seeing the blue flag raves, Christian, for the first time. The GT3s are lapping the GT4s. We just saw Apex Rogue lapping 
the slower GT4 cars. And this is what the GT3s have got to deal the GT3s and the GT4s have got to deal with. Usually when I deal with multi-class racing, usually the GT4s keep to their line and the GT3s they got to make their way around it. So as a GT4 driver, you've got to stick to your line. You can't just change your line in the last seconds. Otherwise, a GT3 driver will be like, hang on, what is the GT4 doing? So when the GT4 driver laps the GT4 driver, the GT4 driver must stick to their line so the GT3 driver can get past. And that's what Apex Rogue has done. And Floppy Fox has now got to lap, I believe that's Eddie, as well. And with the GT3s, 10 seconds a lap faster, then the GT4s, it took 15 minutes until obviously every, the GT3s are starting to lap the GT4s as well. So, Mild, uh, Floppy Fox, one second to Milden. Let's go on board with him. Just look at the way that they're approaching this, this tight bend in Senaton. The crowd are cheering once again. Well, I think we're seeing a battle as well, or is it just multi-class? cars being that I don't know I will keep I will keep an eye on the gaps at oh, the moment Roger, Roger the Mercedes of course I made contact in the lapping zones and there is an overtake and a free, a free wide and Mildred and Flappy Fox uh, Mildred nearly spawned himself to overtake on a GT4 and there is side by side between them Flappy Fox and Mildred Flappy Fox and Mildred touched themselves nearly oh Mildred oh, on the off. grass multiple times and Floppy Fox gain position on, on, on the D, uh, BMW. Uh, and here is the, the key factor. Lapping GT4s and apparently the BMW had the, the worst uh, possible scenario as it was stuck between not two but three GT4s. And now Floppy Fox needs to overtake the BMW and the Mercedes. But apparently the BMW and the Mercedes of GT4s trying to stick to the line. And now the Ferrari is into the inside. Launching the car, gaining as much time as possible, as quickly as possible, because the BMW is right behind him. And now they side by side between the Ferrari and the, the BMW, and the BMW is in front of the Ferrari, just by the air of it. And now they, they switch the position once again. Yeah, so Mildon's about to lap Eddie. So there they come. And uh, you can sometimes you will see from the drivers the headlights as well, saying move out the way. and. So for some drivers as well, when we were asked them in the pre-race interviews um, in the in the conferences as well, what they've been looking forward to as well, because for some drivers, this is the first time that they either raced with it, well, basically raced in the GT4s or raced against other GT4s. So that is something to be wary of as well. So what it says in the briefing, the GT3 drivers got to be patient with the GT4s. Don't expect them to vanish in the air in a corner. A GT3 car responsible for making an overtake and let the GT4 car pick his line. Keep it easy and simple for both of them, because otherwise you both of you will lose a lot of time. So, Floppy Fox. In fact, then. we saw it between them uh, because Milden and Floppy Fox lost in a total of four seconds between. Uh, bet the, the gap is now four seconds between Milden and Rogue, just because Milden has made up a pretty bad. Uh, uh, overtaking maneuver and uh, and also uh, uh, let Flappy Fox being stuck behind him uh, because the, the overtake maneuver was being done in the second sector which is basically the most technical one and, and there has been a huge problem with overtakes and now once again because uh, B the BMW is trying to force the overtake before Flappy Fox because effectively you can use the GT4 to your advantage maybe Launching the car in the right spot uh, and so putting the GT4 as an obstacle for your rivals uh, can work uh, and also it's completely possible. <laughs> but the fact, the key factor is that the back markers give and back markers uh, uh, take out. So a possible advantage took by Rogue could easily disappear in seconds if he made uh, if he makes uh, a wrong overtaking uh, maneuver. And in fact, the gap is now 2.8 seconds, where the Floppy Fox is still trying to reach. Uh, as much time as possible, and he's been stuck between two, two GT4s, and the gap is now, I think, around two seconds between him and the BMW in front of him. So, oh, big crash behind! The 209 in Corrado has hit each other, and now both of them are out of the race in turn one. The McLaren and the Bentley, yes, in Who's GT3. And the Bentley is in GT3 the middle of the... Well. Uh, oh, that, Gale, that has got a bit of damage to Corrado there as well. A bit of a shame there, 
and that has pretty much ended not really much ended their race because they could go in the pits but there's going to be quite a bit of repairs as well but there's quite a few of you a lot of you in the chat saying that these multi-class racers are spicing up the race is a bit more and i have to say i've got to agree but uh, there's a few people losing positions right now due to the fact that they're not used to multi-class racing but this is only the first round of the season still a lot to learn some people even who have raced in ATC for a long time this is their first race with the GT4s as well don't forget the GT4s are DLC as well so they can only get it if they pay a season pass as well so we will find out so Apex Road then still leads 2.9 seconds over Milden Floppy Fox because of the fact that he had to try and get past the GT4s, Ooh. he's lost two seconds oh, no. to Milden. We're seeing some more battles. Pit window is open. Pit window is open. So, drivers can pit any time from now, and they've got 20 minutes to do so. So, that is the most crucial thing. So, if they pit any time from now, they can, and then their pit will turn green, and they'll... Oh! No! That's Thomas without a bit of a spinning in the centre straight. And that is costly for the BMW. And I and I just saw someone retire. I didn't see who that was. Did you see who retired? By the way, I I went to... Uh, not because I was seeing the replay. But what happened between the Bente and the McLaren. And in fact, uh, it wasn't between the Bente and the McLaren. Oh, it uh, was Corey. Talking about the incident in It was Corey. One. Corey's out. Corey's out of the race. Uh, either a, a disconnection... Or a, a big crash. I don't know, but there we go. So Corey's out of the race. We're down to 17 drivers. That's one GT4 down. So Milden, both Milden and Floppy Fox then going for the undercut on Apex Rogue. So they pit it in the pit window. So that means their, their panel on the right hand side is not yellow with the number one, like most drivers now. They are on green. So as long as they pit within no, that 20 minute window, that's absolutely fine. They can't pit before and they can't pit after. So even if they get damage, like Camo Babo did earlier, Camo Babo would have had to pit once again. But Camo Babo, I have to say, doing a great job trying to catch up to the other GT3s. And he's still trying to catch up to Jace. It's a fair play to him right now. So we'll see where Milden and Floppy Fox comes out in relation to Apex Rogue. Surely... Apex Road has got to think about going into the pits right now, seeing his rivals go in. And we're not going to see people on low fuel modes now for the end of the race because they have to take both fuel and tyres for their pit window. They just can't just bother just having low fuel. They, they have to take, take both fuel and tyres. That's a big change for this season as well. So here they come then. So I think M M Michael's staying out i believe no there's a massive gap as well so we are going to keep an eye on milden and floppy fox then oh no we can't oh, keep milden an eye is on off. milden as i did the biggest commentators curse and milden said to me jess do not jinx me and i just did oh for goodness sake milden so milden has spun so surely it'll put apex rogue ahead of milden but what that will do in relation to floppy fox so they're approaching the final bend now does floppy fox and now into the center straight very soon apex rogue is coming out and apex rogue is in the lead by about five or six seconds so apex rogue the overcut worked so the undercut didn't work to his favor it must be might have been a floppy fox got caught in traffic or maybe the gap was just far too much we don't know speaking of the gt4s corrado has made his pit stop but bowers has just but bowers has done a rookie mistake that you shouldn't really do he spent the pit lane he got a drive through so you have to come in with oh, the, next three laps. Me, the next three laps i believe uh christian before you get disqualified so no it's uh drive through is for track limits it's not for speeding in the pit lane uh, no, I, I, I'm sure it said speeding in the pit lane on my screen for Bowers. But no, in, in Santa Cosa, I'm sure that stop and go is uh, for, for for speeding. If you oh, are, right, okay, if you okay. go track limit, uh, you, you get a, tra a drive through. Ah, it, it, mu it must be in my imagination then. But yeah, Bowers will have to come in then once again um, to serve his drive through. 
So Camo Babo, he's the next GT3 to come in to the pit lane and come out. So we'll see where we come. Corrado, I believe, will still be ahead. Obviously, uh, Camo Babo will need to get past him ASAP because Camo Babo is a GT3 car, whereas Corrado is a GT4. And so that leaves five. Oh, Corey's back in, in the server. Corey's back in the server. So I believe it was a disconnect. So. No, but I think, uh, uh, I honestly think that this has been the worst possible race for him because first uh, he started from the pit lane, then uh, he got involved in a crash because uh, what happened in turn one between Michael Gallo and Corrado hasn't been between them, but has been because uh, uh, the Mercedes of uh, the Corsa's Mercedes has been in the middle while the Bentley was overtaking him, and basically the McLaren of Corrado was just uh, there and trying to avoid the, the Bentley spinning in the middle of the track because of the crash, uh, also crashing himself towards the barrier in turn one. So actually, the the incident between the two the two GT3 is it's uh, it has been an incident between the a GT3 and a GT4, and uh, it was it is the first race in, in these kind of things. But basically, the Mercedes was sticking into the right side of the track before turn one, and kind of in the middle and the Bentley didn't exactly know where to go and trying to get into the inside but it was already turn one and they touch, they touch between uh, it has been there has been a touch between the two class of cars so i just think that this is not the race of uh, uh, of his life for corsa no it is not samba is the next gt3 driver to come in then and uh we saw badgerman pit just now as well barras cleared his drive through penalty as well so Samba is now got also got some GT4 cars to try and pass as well. But it's will be for overall position, but not for position in the championship. So I think regardless, you've got to let the GT3 cars through anyway. So Samba gets past the, the GT4 people, which is good. Our GT4 leader, Carmentalist, is still leading well, net race leader. And he's still got to make his pit stop. Uh, as well as Jason in the GT3 and Michael Gallo. Arnold, Khalifa, Eddie and Rageman also got to do their mandatory pit stop. And they've only got 13 minutes to do so. If they don't do it before the 13 minutes, we, I'm almost certain that Dexter's obviously watching. He's one of our stewards. And he will keep a close eye on who has did their compulsory stop with the fuel and tyres in the pit window and who hasn't right now. So, I have got some words on why Camo Babo pitted on lap one. So I didn't see he got damaged, but his brother's in the chat who race in season one. Hello, Blair Grills. Nice to see you in the chat. But, um... He pit on that one because he forgot to put fuel in his car. That is cruel. That is cruel. So he must have still had his qualifying fuel. So that's why he had to pit. But still, it's a good recovery from last, essentially. So he didn't get damaged. He didn't get involved in any instance. He just had to pit for fuel. Ah, oh, come over, eh? But thank you, Black Grills, in the chat for um, saying that as well. But... Yes, a bit, a bit of a shame there. And Christian, more drivers are going in the pit, including our GT4 leader, Car Mentalist. I'm trying to find out who will be the nearest GT4 after Car Mentalist, but we will see. But yeah, our first GT4, leader GT4 driver, is in the pit now. And he always likes to leave it late, doesn't he, Car Mentalist? Sorry, what? Car Mentalist always likes to leave it late by taking a pit stop. He doesn't like to always do it early. Uh, he's more like a type of driver that puts it right in the middle. Uh, nearly every race I, I saw him pitting basically in the middle, plus or less three minutes. He never goes uh, anything, uh, he never do, does anything fancy, uh, odd, uh, completely out of the schemes like I usually do. Uh, and sometimes it goes wrong, and sometimes it goes, it goes right, but pitting in the middle means that nothing really. 
uh, ruin your plans. So it, everything is, is as standard as possible because it's a bit of a middle ground. If you pit earlier, you can get an undercut, but getting uh, uh, tires uh, a bit uh, uh, a bit a bit of tire wear in towards the end. If you pit too early, too late, you can face uh, an overcut, but also you can face an early tire wear depending on also the fuel and etc. So just pitting in the middle is. Uh, is perfect if you don't want to uh, put your mind in a hell of a tremendous what if uh, some oh wait the number 22 is off track oh Rageman Rageman is off track in just before the the start the the main straight uh, in second sector which is the Audi he was I think um, I think he was last anyway in the Audi mm -hmm. So, a bit of a shame for Rage Man. It, it, it's, to be fair, he's been also having a poor session. He did not do qualifying. And he's in the GT4s and uh, he's just losing a bit of time. So, he is dead last now um, out of the runners. Obviously, Corey has retired. He, he has made his pit stop, though. So, it is all good. And we got to keep an eye on this battle between Eddie and Carmentalist. It won't be ball position because Eddie will have to do his one and only stop. And Flip, I have to say, Flip's pit stop, I have to say, is pretty incredible. Flip is going to be a net P2. He's actually a net P2 in this race now in the GT4 class. So I have to say, I haven't not heard of him before tonight, but I know some of you in the chat have. Brilliant debut so far from Flip in the GT4s as well, keeping it controlled as well. Hasn't been involved in any instance so far. And we're seeing Eddie go in. Khalifa is in. So I believe that's, apart from Corey, who's retired, that's all the GT4 drivers that have done their mandatory stop. So that is good news for that. So we hopefully no penalty points awarded. So just leaves Michael Gallo. To do so he doesn't have that long left though he's got eight minutes and 45 seconds you can see it on the right hand side the, the, the time that he's got left so I, I do i do believe that the engineering game will remind him you don't have long left you don't have long left usually it's helpful to have a crew chief installed in the game as i think he's thinking about going into the pits now actually Yes, he is. So he is the last driver. Oh, Kamobo. Kamobo is, already, is, is again off track in turn one. Eh? And oh, it's, go away, camera. The camera's taking the world to register Camo Babo's off there, but he is off. And he dropped. I think he, won't, he, he is losing a bit of time now, but he hasn't dropped to Jason. So, uh, But to be fair, it is easy to do to lose it in turn one, unfortunately. So a bit of a shame for the Bentley driver. So, can he catch up to Corrado? It's going to be hard, but never say never. We'll look at, oh, we haven't looked at our GT4s for quite a long time, actually. Has, uh, we've got Khalifa, who has got some, a GT3 car right up his, well, right up his bum at the moment. His gearbox, as I was about to say, so 34 against, I think, I'm trying to see which GT3 car is lapping Khalifa. I think it might be Corrado, I think. Yes, it is Corrado. So Khalifa getting out of the way. Corrado getting past. And that's how you do the lapping successfully in a GT3 car. So good job, boys. You did that very, very well. So that was in a battle there as well. Gap between Khalifa and the nearest rival, Badgerman, 2.7 seconds. Between Arnold and Flip. Five seconds. Arnold is doing a good job as well. And net third. Well, it's actually because all the GT4s appeared. He is third place in the GT4s. So he could be on course for his first podium on his debut. Of course, he races in the F1 side as well. But this is his first ever race on ACC with us. I believe he's racing ACC in the past in other leagues, but not with us. Oh, so. Corrado is off track in turn one also. Oh, so many people going off turn one, Christian. It's just so difficult just to lose it there. It's just a bit bit of a shame there. We'll see if Jason makes through turn one all right. 
Shame the camera just, just cuts at the wrong time there so you can barely see it. But good news, Christian. Every single, well, apart from Corey, because I don't think Corey's going to get back into the session. Every single driver has done their mandatory stop. They followed the pit procedure correctly. We can all go home happy. No disqualifications, no penalties for people not following the pit, pit procedure. Big group. Dexter can go home happy as well. Uh, co compared to how the lapping session has, has been, the, the pit stop has been uh, very clear, especially because uh, this is not a track that has uh, many races on uh, because of its structure being up. Alton, uh, basically, the track is uh, as bumpy as Alton, ta Alton Park, but it's a bit more straight uh, in, in terms of layout. Uh, the fact is that Turn 1 is very bumpy compared to the other basically the whole part of the of the track um, as any British uh, British track uh, in, in the, the British GT pack uh, it's extremely odd <laughs> because uh, the structure of the this type of track uh, is is not uh, it's, it has not have been seen anywhere close uh, no, nothing close has been made and I will say luckily because as we've seen, uh, many drivers have, have made multiple mistakes, especially in turn one, but also just before the straight, uh, and I think it is turn uh, nine, maybe. Yeah, okay, no, it's turn eight. <laughs> and mm, the fact is, this track especially uh, gives a lot of um, evidence on both uh, uh, slow corners, and slow hairpin most especially but also straight line speed uh, you need both of them and it's very difficult when you, when you have this combination of uh, what do you need to do uh, in gt4 it's pretty pretty easy you turn the car you turn it on track adjust the pressure Ooh. do something a bit random but <laughs> in gt4 it's easy in gt3 you really need to concentrate and understand where the, where you are stronger where you are weaker uh, where the setup can get better, we can get worse if you do something, uh, some some edits. And this track is very tricky for this for this kind because it has a, a lot of uh, it requires a good straight line speed, but also a good a very good slow cornering speed. And it's uh, when you try to get the maximum possible towards the straight line speed, you tend to lose the car in the in some spots, and this is why some some drivers turn the turn up on the grass while going through turn one. And I think that 22 is already off track. Yes, he's still off track. Uh, that is Rage Rant, who's gone off track again. He's three laps down. Well, he's two laps down. Um, car mentalist, one lap down. Well, three laps down the GT threes, and I wonder if that's his session over because he has gone into the pits there so I wonder if that's game over for the GT the Audi GT4 driver of Rage Man. So a bit of a shame. So we've got two retirements already but we are encouraged in these GT3s to not give up when the going gets tough because we do have an ERT going gets tough award as said earlier on in the stream. Dexter would love me saying all of that. Closest battle we got on track, only battle that we've got on track. We may as well go on board with these lovely people. It is Camo Babo versus Corallo. Four tenths, well, it was four tenths per second, now it's eight tenths, dropping just a little bit. Let's go on the onboard shot. The sun is glaring down at the moment. It's 8 44 pm in game, and all we could see. Someone try and go for the move. I think Corrado made a little bit of a mistake there. Going side by side into this tight bend there. Camo Babo almost got the car to a beautiful position to get the overtake done. But Corrado's like, you know what? You're not getting that position. The Bentley is a huge thing compared to the McLaren. This was actually the same livery that Carl Mentalist used when he won in season one of ACC. So I wonder if Corrado has had sort of a um, good luck charm. So we'll Like a lucky foot. Yeah, like, like a lucky foot, because I have to say good defending and he's pulled away from Kamababa again. So a slight mistake did not 
herdsman away and he's handling the pressure a bit more as well. He, usually when I make a mistake, usually the pressure gets to me a bit and I tend to struggle a bit more. But these drivers, they have a lot more experience. So there we go. So the pit window is closed in one minute, but luckily everyone has done their pit stops anyway. So no need to worry about that. But since obviously Corey's still in the session, um, you'll see the number one and you'll see what happens when they do not make their pit stop. So uh, you get to see the best of both worlds there. So Carmentalist still leads the GT4 class. Apex Row still leads the GT3 class. Both of those drivers not being challenged in their respective classes. So with those two drivers could be the drivers we speak to in at the interviews later on. Apex Row, we, we rarely speak to in the winner's table. So I believe it will be his first ever win in ACC 100 rating. But for Camo Babo, how much time could he find? 151.9 was his last lap. I will keep an eye on the other laps as well. But Camo Babo, he is losing a bit of time compared to Corrado. Oh, Milden is off track again. Milden off track. Milden, when can't he catch a break in this race? He's still in third position, but all this is just going to allow Gallo in fourth position just to gain, gain, gain. I swear, he's like a, a magnet. He just like wants to be spun on something like that. And he's trying to get past Badgerman as well, but Badgerman is trying to catch up to the likes of Khalifa, Arnold as well. Someone else is off the track. Uh, it's a yeah, green... it's uh, Rageman. No, it, yeah, it's Rageman Yeah, again. it's Rageman who's a few laps down anyway, so obviously Badgerman doesn't need to worry about that at the moment but my oh my that was probably uh the closest thing i've uh, ever seen at the moment but milden milden just stopped spinning for goodness sake <laughs> he is a runner-up in previous seasons and he just seems to be struggling i think last season he, he struggled a bit at the start of the season and then he picked up again and decided to go back to his old self very soon as well so these two have got a lot of work to do. Obviously, Rage Man near the back, Milden. Surprisingly, still on the podium even after that spin. So, it just goes to show that Milden can be quick on his day even with those spins. Camo Babo then. Two attempts. I think Carmetris made a mistake. Yeah, yeah definitely. Carmetris made a mistake somewhere because the gap was five seconds between him and Flip, and now it's 1.7 seconds. So now the GT4 battle is between Carmen is among Carmen Tris Flip and RT and now yeah, because I just realised that actually oh. the gap wasn't as big as it was. It was five seconds, yeah. So we've got a battle for P6 in the GT3 and we got a battle for the lead finally in the GT4 class and Carmen this is gonna hate me for saying this as well for jinxing him, but you know, I'm sorry. I always I I'm sorry, okay. I won't I won't do the same when I when I commentate for first in four weeks time so Arnold is right behind as well Arnold could be in the battle for the win of this race as well in the GT4s as well this is gonna be intent grab your popcorn we, we don't have long to go this race I kind of wish it was 75 minutes because I do not want it to be over in 17 minutes because there's a there's action is starting to ramp up it's usually like this in the 80s isn't it start of the race gets busy middle of the race quite quiet for most drivers and then this part of the race it really starts to heat up a little bit the tires start to cool the track cools as well which means more battling as well and uh and uh i think more cars will start to close in ever so slightly and i think everyone is starting to get used to getting lapped by the dreaded gt3s to be fair the 998 of Corrado is going to try and do the same thing. And I believe that's Apex Rogue as well. So Apex Rogue is about to lap Corrado too. This is going to be tight then. So a GT3 lapping a GT3. And so a car again has to take a similar approach to what the GT4 has done earlier on in the race. Oh, now it's probably lost a bit of time there to flip Bordeaux. And Flip's lost a bit of time to Carmentos. He's lost about one. He lost about five tenths per second there to Carmentos. That we've got quite a few Flip fans in the chat. 
Tom said, keep pushing, flip. Um, he is trying his best. Everyone is actually trying their best to get the moves done. And we could see people's best result in this league as well. So we will see what happens. Where's Floppy Fox in relation to Apex Rogue? Apex Rogue. He's just behind. It's not too, too far. It's three seconds and so. 3.8. So it could close up. Apex Rogue's got to get past the other GT4, the other GT3 and GT4s though, because otherwise Floppy Fox could be like, you know what? I could try and catch up easily as well. So this is a very tight. Exit and in towards the final corner. So Floppy Fox gets past. Flip quite nicely. There we go. Everyone's pretty much getting being passed by GT3s right now. That's how uh, tense it is as well. So in this moment, the flip is very lucky because he's been overtaken by the, the GT3s nearly all, all the time, sir. Uh, for no, yes, four GT3 have, have passed him in this, uh, in this last lap, and three of those four passes were on the straight line. So he really lost, lost very little time compared to Carmentalist in terms of uh, uh, where to let the other pass. But Carmentalist was a bit more clever in, in these overtaking uh, opportunities for the GT3s because he lost even less time compared to his rival right now. In fact, he has also gained a second because uh, this is where I w what I was talking about early in the, uh, before the race. Also, the strategy is to oh, Floppy oh, Fox, Floppy Fox is off. stuck. Floppy Fox is off the track. Sorry to cut you off there, but that no, is no, no. <laughs> that is huge. That is absolutely huge for Floppy Fox. He was running so well. He is very lucky that Mildred is so far back because that could have ended a disaster. But surely that must mean. Apex Rogue has got it let more easy now for the winner of this race, but never say never. The gap's now 9.4 seconds. And I was on board with Floppy Fox as well. Ah, what a shame. But no damage, I don't think. He just got a bit of grass on his tyres, which is never good. But yeah, one of the favourites in the GT3 category. He's bottled it, unfortunately. But he is, he, to be honest, it was too close for comfort. That kind, that kind of made me jump there for a the time being, didn't it? So, uh, there we go. And uh, Bowers and Badgerman are getting quite close into Turn 1. Well, it was past Turn 1, actually. And heading towards the bend now. 1.5 seconds, actually. So, he is finding his time. And we've got Eddie 12.7 seconds down the road. And then... We have got... Is Arnell still catching up to Flip? Yes, he is. Arnell's caught up to Flip by quite a lot now, once again. So this could be a battle for P2, Christian, in GT4s. Yeah, Arnold gained massively in this, in this last phase because before the overtake, the overtakes uh, from, from the major class, the gap was around 2.5 seconds and now he's uh, is back at 1.1 second. Arnaud is really stretching his, his Porsche as much as he can to get into Flip, into Philip, and Philip will probably try to get into Carmentalist. I think Carmentalist uh, uh, getting some advantage in the early phase of the race. He probably uh, managed to not get too much wear into his tires. Not too much in comparison, because also uh, it's it's been like uh, I think Philip just. Uh, just with uh, some minutes before his, uh, his two rivals and it's it has been enough probably to not slow him, him down completely but just those one two tenths slower uh, oh and still now he, he probably it was just a moment because now the gap is 1.6 seconds and he also gained the mentalist so probably it was just a moment of uh, um, overheat in the ties and now he starts to gain again. Also, I don't know if it's about the setup because although the setup in GT4s is very little effective, it's still effective. It, it's, you can still gain some temps. It's, if he managed to get the setup done right for some section of the race, which are from what I understood is basically the main, uh, basically the second sector. So I think it's about now, yes, second and first 
sector is where the Porsche of Philip gains the most honor now than Carmentalist. Yes. Carmentalist has a more uh, old track uh, configuration, probably. He, he is good basically in every in every single aspect of the track. Uh, Philip is probably better on just on the final part of the of the track. In fact, in the first sector, he's struggling a lot, especially now because I just I just I've just seen that. He tried to let the BMW of Milton uh, pass by, and he's lost a ton of time. I think around one second. Now we will get into the inter time, and yes, in fact, he lost a whole second to to Arnaud. And now the battle for second place is effective because the two Porsches are no, no, less than a second. A bit. I thought he went a bit wide there for time being, but I think that's how you take no, the corner. No, no. That's how you take the corner. Okay, so I, I padded a bit there. Seven tenths now. It's the gap. He's gaining quite a bit in cornering speed as are now, so it might be due to his setup a little bit. But then Flip gains a bit Ooh, on the Oh, Corrado's off track! Who's off track? Corrado. Corrado, Corrado once again. Corrado is off track and lost position. Corrado has lost position to Samba, I believe. So Samba, who... Uh, no, so Cabababo. Cabababo. Oh, Cabababo as well, so... Yeah, that is... No, a, Samba is my side. So... Quite a few positions lost for Corrado, so that is a shame. He's just been unlucky, hasn't he, with the spins, I think. The, the, the big spinners, I have to say, Corrado, Milden, Rageman, Eddie as well spun quite a few times. Everybody else seems to be okay. I haven't seen much spins from them, but they might have spun off camera. Um, that I obviously did not see, but there we go. Um, if you are liking the action, by the way, follow us on Twitch already if you haven't already. Follow us on Twitter as well, at One Hot Race for both of them. We also upload the VODs of all our Twitch streams to our YouTube channel, usually a day, a day or two after the race. So if you have missed pretty much most of the action, you can pretty much watch it back afterwards. And I know, I know some of the drivers will like to do that as well. So make sure you check that out very, very soon. Gap now to the leader, 6.8 seconds. Due to, it's a shame that that battle for the lead was cut short in the GT3 due to Floppy Fox mistake. So he's got to be on it for the entirety of the last stint. He's got 8 minutes and 36 seconds to go. But I have to say, the impressive battles I've seen this race have got to be from the GT4s and also from Kamababa and the GT3s with Corrado as well. The GT4s have been the most impressive so far and it's my first experience actually commentating on these GT4s and obviously I've got all the cars mixed up with who's in what class but again this is something we will get used to as the season goes by because even though I won't be in the commentary box next week I will still be in the chat, I will still be watching so I will still be taking note as well and Flip's gained a bit too car mentalist there as well but not a lot What's the gap between Khalifa and Arnold, actually? Those are quite a bit of rivalry there forming as well. The f uh, it's actually quite a bit of a gap as well. But to Bowers, 3.8 separates them as well. So Bowers, I have to say Bowers. In, 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 uh, I think you can tell who's teammates because Bowers and Carrada have similar liveries. But Bowers is in a net P5 in the GT Force right now. I'm doing a great job so far good points on the board obviously if you do finish because there's 10 drivers in each split you will score points so plenty of incentives to do well and obviously let us know your thoughts in the chat what you about do you like this gt3 and gt4 format and would you prefer it to stay i like it to stay it's the best thing that one hub racing has ever done in in atc so thank you to dexter milden and nick well thinking of these great ideas in the league have we got any more battles on oh, now that it has lost a bit of time to flip this lap? So surely, unless Flip makes a big mistake, Flip could get P2. Arnold oh, has got to gain a lot in this final few minutes. But he must have something saved in the tank with the fuel. He must be pushing! Has someone... Is it Flip? Flip's Oh, falling. Philip is off track. Another commentator's curse. I, I, I lost count of how many commentator's curse I did unintentionally on stream. But aren't, I, I said Flip was, Flip was going to get comfortable second place. And now 
Flip by the spin. Arnold almost made contact with Flip. Arnold's not up into second place pretty much in this race. I think it's going to be hard to catch up to Carmentalis, but never say never. We'll see what the gap is when the timings decide to behave itself, please. Thank you. 4.4 seconds. So... If no, he, it's more. So it's eight seconds. He, so... Uh, it, it does take a while to update. And fl between Flip and Arnold is eight seconds. Yeah, I was talking about the gap between Arnold and Carmentalis, the gal for the lead. So the only way for Arnold to win this race is to gain two seconds per lap, which is quite impossible for him because Carmentalis is one of the fastest drivers in this league, in the GT Rawls. But if Arnold could pull a miracle on Carmentalis, you never know. You never know. Carmentalis could make a mistake. And Dex is just chewing on in the chat. Go on, waffle man. <laughs> well, they are called the Belgian waffles for a reason. Arnold is Belgian, believe it or not. And he's a nice, he is a nice man as well. I have raced him many times in many leagues, and he's very, very fair, very, very clean as well. But there's been many times where he's lapped me. Pretty much. It's hard the way he lost it. Yeah, he had, he had a bit, of, he had a bit of a tank slapper there in that corner, so he has lost a bit of time to come into this. But there we go. No, I, I mean, uh, uh, Philip, the way he lost it, basically he was trying to push as hard as possible and perhaps, uh, because I was looking at him and initially I didn't realize he was the one that spun because I was watching all three of them co constantly. And from what I, I've i seen, basically he was pushing so hard towards the towards turn, uh, turn four that he actually lost the rear. In fact, he didn't go off track. He just spun. So I just think that he... He found the limit of the car, and unfortunately, the worst possible moment. That is uh, Arnold's teammate, actually, of Samba lapping Flip mm. Philip. So there we go. Uh, that is why you should have similar liveries, guys, because then I know also if it's a GT3 or if it's a GT4. Um, but the GT4s will be near the back anyway. So three minutes and fifty seconds left to go of this race. The GT3 leader at the moment is Apex Row. Gap is quite some margin. And Carmentalis has gained one second on Arnaz. So I think the battles... Actually, I'm not going to say anything more. I said some bad stuff about Philip and jinxed him. So... But... It is Philip's first time in GT4. Okay, I did not know that. Even though it's his first time with us, it's his first time with GT4. So, to be fair, he was in the net second for a long time of this race. So he's doing a pretty good job. But he still he still could get a podium. Because everybody else is quite a bit down on on Philip. So, I have to say, very still very impressive. And, to be fair, it was only a, a small spin. He only lost about three, four seconds. Not... Yeah, no, wait a minute. He lost about seven seconds. But still, it could have been worse. He could have lost like 20 seconds and had damage. So, fair play to him. And he could be a regular podium sitter in GT4 if he could keep this up. So, Apex Rogue in the lead. Floppy Fox. Ooh, a kind of track is in NN8. It's got other game. It was that that gone off the track, sorry? Corrado, the McLaren. Corrado in the McLaren has gone off again. How many spins is that for him? I don't know, but he is getting uncomfortable with the car. He's second last in the GT3s at the moment. And will that allow? Is Jason on the same lap? I don't know. If he is, Jason could be like, you know what? That could be a position gain and you won't be last. So we will see. And don't forget, this is also Arnaud and Kalipa's first time in the GT4s as well. And those two are doing a stellar job as well. But speaking of that, Bowers and Khalifa are going to be having a nice battle for P P4 of this race. And there uh, we got the number eight of Floppy Fox lapping Bowers. And that is another example on how you do it, but that's going to lose Bowers a bit of time. So he's going to hope that the GT3 gets out the way of Khalifa. As soon as he can, because otherwise it's going to be a whole second, which he does. So, and I have to say, 
some good looking Lambos on the grid. Good looking Porsches as well. I think oh, Jason's the only Lambo. Jason's the only Lambo actually on the grid. Yeah. Jason's mm -hmm. the only Lambo on the grid. The rest are all Porsches, BMWs, Ferraris, Audis. We only got one Mercedes at the moment, and that is Corey, who's retired. And I thought there would only be one Bentley, but there's two. So the Bentleys are coming out in full force as well. And we're about to approach the end of this race. The Apex Road then crosses the line. It's on the final Ooh, lap. No, the 24 is off track. It was catching Khalifa, but unfortunately he went off track just in the last turn. And apparently he lost about 10 to 5 to 10 seconds to his, uh, to his rival. So I have to That's say, Bowers was on course be getting P4 from Khalifa, but Khalifa could leave a side of a lead there. And we saw Eddie and Ooh, Badman fight. Behind. We saw Eddie and Badman fight earlier on towards the, the beginning of this race. It's in, at the, towards the end as well. Side by side then into turn one. It's BMW versus Aston Martin as they make towards the bend of turn two. Can the number 92 get past the Aston Martin and make a bit of contact there? So easy to do though as they head towards turn three as uh, Eddie's oh, gone wide a little wide. bit. Oh, 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 no, but it's not Eddie that's gone wide it's badman's has gone wide actually because they are similar cars it's hard to tell but they're both in the rt after all but it is eddie that is ahead of badman but some good battle in there as well and i'm just trying to see where apex rogue is on track he's not long to go before we reach the end of this race but we still got eddie and badman fighting so we've got to watch them as well I think Badgerman has lost a bit of time there, but he's still got it all to gain. Oh, he, he, he can almost try and get him here, here as well. But we will watch them in just a second because here comes Apex Rogue. He took the lead of the race at the start. Had a brilliant start compared to Mild and he never looked back. And he goes towards the centre straight, he flashes lights, he knows what this means to him. He wins his first ever race on a, a one-up racing ATC in the GT3 class. Brilliant stuff. And his car mental is going to cross the line soon. He's not that long to go. Actually, actually no, nope, he's in a different part of the track. So, we got uh, Badgerman's lost a bit of time, so we're going to have no battles there. Flobby Fox will come across the line in P2 in the GT3. Milden will round off the podium in the GT3s as well. He's still happy, even though he spun a few times, which is, uh, to be fair, a bit of a shame that. we still got our GT4 class leader at the moment, still negotiating the final part of the lap. Uh, so that will mean Michael Gaylo will come across the line soon. Yes, he will. To finish in fourth position, I have to say, for a debutant into this league. A stellar performance from him. Pretty much no mistakes from Mikhail Gallo. He performed well all race. No, no, hardly any battles though, but he kept it together. Samba, after, I have to say, good comeback drive. Fifth, Kamo Baba as well. Good finish. And uh, let's go on board with Carmentalist as he is going to cross the line. To take maximum points in the GT4 class. He slashing his lights. He finishes in style. He continues where he's left off in last season. And he leads the championship now in GT4. Arnold comes across the line. He takes second place. On his debut race in the league and in the GT4s. And Flip comes across the line in third. So that is your result then. Apex Rogue is the winner of the GT3s. Carmendes is the winner of the GT4s. And that is a good first race. Good first multi-class race for us in at ECC at One Hub Racing. Christian, what did you think? Uh, apart from certain moments with Wolf Flex, uh, <laughs> uh, obviously first race, some drivers still need to adapt to the fact that GT4 have to stick to a line and uh, not trying to defend slash battling position with higher class racing uh it went pretty well uh, plenty of action compared to the fact that uh, some drivers were effectively battling for position with the gt4 battling for position in the middle of the of the battle and basically the race just become a chess uh, 
but uh, at high speed, a very high speed chess with multiple players battling into the chessboard. So I don't, I'm not sure how easy is that to, to try, but yeah. Mm, to be fair, supremacy you, by you, Porsche you, you, in you get races like that, don't you, where it gets quite quiet, but it, it, it definitely made up for it towards the end of the race as well. And we just seen Apex reaction in the chat. He couldn't quite believe it. He's lost for worse. And Apex, mate, if you're watching this, which you are, well deserved. And get your butt in the voice chat for some interviews because we are going to be interviewing the top, the winners from each class. Um, so we'll be interviewing Apex Row for the GT3s and then Car Mentalist for the GT4s. There is a rating for interview VC ready for you. We'll keep your seats warm, don't worry. Whoever, basically, whoever turns up first will interview first. So, uh, um, But there's one thing that I almost forgot, I literally almost forgot to do, um, is for the first time in 2022, I think we're still doing this, Dexter, correct me if I'm wrong, we've got to pick one drive of the day each and pick a question. So, I, I literally do not know. I will have to give, well, actually, no. Since you are the co-com, I will let you go first. Who is your driver of the day? What would you like to ask him before we get our interviewee interviewees in? Um, I actually want to award the driver of the day to the surprise of the race. Uh, as I said before, there may be some surprise. And in fact, I just noticed that some, a driver took my eye because Philip in the GT4 class was very close to car mentalist. And I very... I have a lot of experience with him, and I know that Carmenta is very fast. So, encountering someone that was very close to him is a bit of a, of a surprise to me. So, my question is, uh, if this is the first time racing in GT4, uh, and, the, and if so, uh, how did he feel uh, towards the transition be between GT3 and GT4? Good question. And... I, I, I thank goodness you didn't pick who I was going to pick because um, you've gone for a GT4 driver. I'm going for a GT3 driver and I'm going for the race winner, Apex Row, because it is his first win in GT3 and in ACC in general because he's mainly an F1 driver. He, he had a brilliant start. I have to say, one of the best starts I've seen in a while. And... He had pressure with the likes of Floppy Fox and Milden, didn't let that phase him, and he just dominated the whole race. And then my question is, were you expecting to take the win of the race after, after seeing the lineup on the grid? Because your performance was excellent today. That is my question. So, you know what? Let's bring one of our driver of the days in and our race winner in as well. From the little start with the GT3s first. Hey, Mr. Apex Rogue, your first ever win in ACC in the GT3s against the big guns. And you get my Drive of the Day nomination as well. You're welcome. Tell us, how does it feel? Uh, amazing. <laughs> I, I didn't expect that coming into the season at all. I thought I would be behind Milton, Bobby Fox and all that, considering the pace last season. But I'm just shocked myself. Yes, talk us through that qualifying then as well, because you pretty much you surprised me in terms of your pace. We thought you were going to be up there um, towards, like I would say, P3, P4, but I wasn't expecting you to be near Milden as well. Your qualifying must have, you must have got it in all the right places there. Huh? Yeah, it looks like it. Um, I had a very shaky qualifying, actually. I, I had like two clean laps the entire time. And the rest of my was drifting. I think I heard in the stream you said that. But, uh, yeah, I just got it right in all the right places. I actually went, like, a second or two quicker than my practice time. So I'm wow. Really I'm really, really confused how that happened. But, uh, yeah, it was just it was just perfect, the lap that I did. I think you were, you saw a few spins in pretty much behind you and in front of you during the race as well. Not much, pretty much, I was going to talk about what happened during the race, but not much happened during the race because you were in the front for all of it, <laughs> pretty much. So you weren't in any battles or anything. So just, we'll talk about your start there. Milda was on pole. You, you, you got the per perfect launch. Talk us how you approached 
the start because it must have been a lot of pressure trying to get P1 against pretty much a GT3 legend. <laughs> yeah, I, I told myself to start the race. I have an hour to do this. If I have the pace, I can do it. And I, I think it was Milton's fault there that he just didn't have the best start because I didn't feel like I had the best start. But, ah, uh, so he probably made a bit of a mistake there. I, th I think he's went a bit too slow at the start or at the end of it. I don't know how that happened. Mm. But, uh, I, I, was just I was just concerned about being able to keep Floppy Fox behind the entire time. I never thought that Milden would make mistakes and that I could get ahead of him. But once I got ahead, I was, what, like three seconds ahead in the first two laps, I think. I'm not sure. But uh, that was a lot. Yeah, you, you probably were lost for words when you saw Milden made that mistake at the start as well. So uh, that probably must have gained you an advantage as well. Just because we need to we need to interview, obviously, Carmenta this as well. And we got to wrap up the stream soon as well. Next week, I need to check what track we're on next week. Laguna Seca. So we head to America next week. So we're not in Britain anymore. One, have you raced around here? And two, are you confident about this track going into next week? I have done a lot of looking at Seca on iRacing and GT Sport, but I don't. I think I've raced it once on ACC. I I don't have much confidence going into it, but I did have any confidence going into the race today. So I think it's just a lot more practice to try and keep up there. Um, uh, until you don't touch the sand, uh, you are good. <laughs> yeah, basically that the is, sand in the track is ice. That is true, especially that downhill section as well. I tried that on iRacing, racing is absolutely hell. <laughs> but uh, there we go, uh, Christian. Any questions for our GT3 race winner? Um, I know that uh, for the fact that trying to battle in for first position uh, always gives you some excitement and especially winning. Uh, I I still remember the first time I I won in in a set of course. I was like I won uh, basically Max Verstappen, uh, but in my room. Uh, <laughs> how did, did did you feel? Uh, how did you feel in that moment for you? Uh, that last lap was very very nervous. I was very 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 nervous. I I was really really trying to keep as much as I could. I actually. I think I only had like four liters at the end, so I was fuel saving for the last two or three laps just to try and keep enough fuel for the end. But uh, that last lap, I think I had an uh, error going into the last two corners. And once I got, once I got onto that straight and I seen that that's all there is, I was, I was shouting. I'm, I, I love sim racing and being able to win races and leagues is amazing. Yeah, and uh, what's more as well, yeah, y your team has got off to a perfect start in Volkswagen racing. Your teammate also won in the GT4 class as well, which means your your team is leading the constructors. So uh, is that is that a perfect match in heaven, knowing that uh, your teammates won there as well? Are you confident that you could, uh, both, of, both of you could do it in round two? I am really hoping so. Um... Obviously, a lot of practice to do, but whenever a car mentalist uh, and I teamed up, I knew that at least I knew from the GT4 side of the uh, race that car mentalist would be very reliable to be able to bring in a lot of good points. And if I made mistakes, I might actually be all right with it. But you didn't but, make uh, a mistake today. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't make any mistakes in the race. Thankfully, they came out in qualifying. But uh, yeah, being able to have a teammate like car mentalist and two two seasons now champion so it's it's great being able to have him knowing that he can bring back as much as he can yeah that, that's that yeah, it's also been a double uh, double winning team yeah double winning yeah. team could we have the similar thing next we will have to wait and see so we just interviewed our gt3 winner first time winner um congratulations apex rogue i'll let you uh go and celebrate and now we're going to be interviewing someone who's used to winning in our leagues and pretty much on ACC as well. So we're going to get him in as well. He's, he's, of course, Apex Rose's teammate as well. Here we go then. We've got Carmentalist in the booth once again. We're pretty much getting used to this just like last season. How Before before we uh, start properly, uh, how how are the GT4s for you? Cause is, is it the first time you've run in the GT4s? Hi, guys. Uh, yeah, it, that is the first time... 
I've competitively driven a GT4 car on this game, um, which was, uh, yeah, a bit of a baptism of fire, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but yeah, that was amazing. Uh, thank you, Jess, as well, for not commentators cursing me today. You're welcome. <laughs> I, was a bit, I was a bit worried that I, I was going to do that, but luckily you just kept the car on the road and, that, and I didn't embarrass myself there. But uh, yeah, an an another win for you. Was it what you were expecting to get the win? Not at all, really, coming into it. I did a bit of practice Sunday night was kind of when I did the majority of my practice. And I I could see in the session I was in, I was doing fairly similar times to Eddie when he was in the session as well. Um, and I felt the car was quite a handful. So I was like, someone else has probably got a better handle on one of these GC4 cars and they're going to do a better job. But I think that's just the way of the world with GC4 cars by the looks of things. I think they're just a handful across the board. So, um yeah, wasn't expecting it. I was expecting hopefully to be towards the front, but to win on my first race in the GT4 car, yeah, definitely didn't expect it, especially at a track as, as difficult as Snetterton. Yeah, because obviously you're used to the GT3s. How long did it take for you to get used to GT4s, knowing that it's slower than the GT3s? Because is it easier or is it harder, do you think? I, weirdly, I think the GT4 cars are harder to drive, I think. Mm. I think... Because with the G I had this a couple of times in the race, there was a, a, a part in the race, maybe about 20 minutes from the end, where I lost a lot of my lead. Because I sometimes when you outbreak yourself in a GT3 car, you can kind of rely on the grip and the downforce to keep you on the road. But in a GT4 car, if you step over the line even slightly, you don't have the downforce or the grip or anything like that to, to stop you from going off the road. So I went off the road at turn one because I broke slightly a bit too late and was just mm. never recovering it. So... They're, on, they're a handful to begin with, and the margin for error is a lot smaller. So you've got to be on the line all the time. Otherwise, you're, well, if you've got to be pushing it, otherwise, you're really, really slow. But if you push it too much, it, it's it's really unforgiving. So, yeah, it was, it was very difficult to get used to. You can't yeah. the first person ever to say something like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. Well, you see, he's a. Uh, he's, uh, he's, uh downplaying expectation before the season and he usually comes out on top you see uh, that he's doing a Lewis Hamilton you know <laughs> um so you you had yeah you had you had a bit of a clear in, in front as well not much trouble behind as well but were you a bit worried that the likes of Flick was was catching towards the end I was a little bit worried, especially after my mistake. I I knew that I was one mistake away from them being right on me as well, but I, th I feel like Flip and who was the other one behind me? Uh, Arnold, wasn't it? Um, Yossi Arnold, they were the two behind me. I think they were more focused on each other, really. Um, they were quite close to one another, so I had the opportunity to to kind of gap them. And I think the, the GT3 cars coming through as well, coming through the field, really kind of helped. Well, helped me in a sense that people behind couldn't really get their momentum together to go for a charge because... They would go for a couple of laps and maybe close in a little bit and then they'd have to get out of the way for a GT3 car and it would kind of ruin their momentum. So I think that in a sense helped me as well. So yeah, I was worried about a mistake, but in terms of maybe actual speed by the end of the race, I wasn't too concerned about losing the lead. Yes, we head to Laguna Seca next week. Uh, mm. We saw that Apex Row might be a bit wide there. Have you ever raced around there and what? What do you think are the challenges going into next week? Are you going to get another win or do you think someone else will challenge you next week in the GT4s? Um, <laughs> so I am um, not a fan of Laguna, to say. Um, at no, least one the no, no, yeah, I mean, no one is. <laughs> no one is, but at least in the GT3 cars, I, I really, really disliked the track, I think. The first half of the track is okay, and then obviously the corkscrew as well is, is quite memorable, but a lot of the corners, the there's so much, they're so bumpy. The track is so bumpy that the cars really aren't used to it. So it's really difficult to to kind of find a rhythm around the track because you're bumping along the surface of the track quite a lot. So it's quite a difficult track to manage. I don't know how it's going to be in a GT4 car. I think Snetterton's pretty flat in terms of elevation change, and the cars are a handful here. So I can't imagine what they're going to be like at Laguna. I think they're going to be. Um, uh, yeah, a little bit crazy. So I think that one's going to be a race of survival more than anything else for me. Yeah, best of luck for that one. And uh, Christian, any questions? 
basically you said everything I wanted to ask you because I, I wanted to ask you how did you feel with GT Force, but you Sorry. already answered everything. <laughs> So, so I don't have anything in mind right now. <laughs> okay, that's absolutely fine then. So uh, congratulations to our GT4 winner, uh, Car Mentalist, and also our, our team leader as well, because uh, Apex Rogue also won in the, in the GT3. So congratulations. I'll go and let you uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Well done. So that is the end of the, the stream then for ACC Season 3. The hype was there pretty much since... The last few weeks and we eventually got to the start of the race and to be honest it I, I, I loved it. it it was brilliant and obviously Christian did a great job alongside me as well sad news is well it's a bit of a sweet moment I won't be here next week because the, the the sweet part of it is John's gonna be here for the next two weeks he's gonna be back uh surely he's gonna have some fun having some multi-class action to commentate on as well but the good news is you'll still have christian alongside john as well so you'll still get to hear christian's beautiful italian voice so uh it's uh been an absolute pressure i'll be here for round four in bathurst good luck to me on that one trying to commentate on that i'm going to enjoy that but thank you for joining us before we go let's give a last plug on our sponsors so um, a big thanks to SimGrid for pow powering the league this season. They're the ones going to be doing all the standings for us and obviously uh, controlling the back end and stuff and also helps us with our sign-ups. Make sure you follow us on SimGrid. Um, go on to the host section and find One Hub Racing. Thank you very much. Um, we also sponsored by Next Level Racing who... Uh, provide prizes um, to our F1 leagues as well and do a lot to support the league pretty much since the very start. So thank you to Next Level Racing. 3M Sim Racing provide a pair of Sim Racing gloves as our prizes as well. So thank you very much to them. Vespertine that provide merch and money for our prizes. So thank you very much to them as well. And finally, our partners ERT who sponsored the ERT Go and Gets Tough Award which we talked about earlier and a big thank you to all our ERT drivers as well for racing in this league. So those are our sponsors. We've gone through our sponsor. We've gone through our driver of the day. I think we've gone through everything. Like we said next week, join us. Well, join John and Christian same time next week, 7 p.m. UK time for Laguna Seca. Another 60-minute race. Will we see Apex Rogue and Aiden? take the top spots once again in their classes or will we see someone different take the fold and we'll make it two from two. We'll have to wait and see. I've been Jess. Christian's been Christian. Have a good evening. We will see you next time. Goodbye. Good night.